people next we'll be starting with accounting standard 16 which talks about borrowing cost borrowing cost sir the name itself is saying borrowing cost that means it some it is something to do with something to do with borrowing on the borrowing there will be a cost so what is this borrowing cost can anyone tell me what what this means sir borrowing means loans correct no the loan which the company has taken or the debenture which the company has issued those are we refer to as borrowings on borrowings what do you think company will pay on borrowings the company will have to pay if you have taken a bank loan then company has to pay interest to the bank people if the company has issued debentures then to the debenture holders the company has to give away or give interest so the treatment of that interest or that interest only here we call it as what borrowing cost how should we account to that borrowing cost or is there something that we need to keep in mind when we are accounting borrowing cost is what AS 16 is trying to target everyone got this so it only talks about the cost associated with the borrowing which will be predominantly your interest cost that does not mean only interest cost is borrowing cost like when you go for a bank loan bank also charges processing charges if you remember to process your loan they have to verify your documents they have to hire lawyers to vet your documents and all so bank also to process the loan will generally charge some processing charges that also will be considered as what borrowing cost itself whatever cost that you are incurring towards the borrowing we refer to as borrowing cost the major such borrowing cost is interest how should we account the interest is what we are trying to target here people good sir what is the journal entry for interest you tell me if you have paid the interest what is the journal entry interest account debit to bank account and this interest is an expense expense should be transferred to p and what is the transfer entry p and l account debit to interest account let's say that if the interest is 1 lakh then you will pass this journal entry for 1 lakh and close it yes, sir. sir for 2 entries 1 whole accounting standard ah. crazy fellows I tell you looks like accounting board standard board people are uh, wetty yeah they have a lot of free time I think for 2 journal entries 1 whole accounting standard ah, sir huh? amount could be anything but conceptually anything headache ah. same thing is done in CA final also sir IFR also, also you have on borrowing cost. Huh? We 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 don't know something. What is what do you think? Uh, some some grey area could be there. Let me let, let's not go into that. What according to you? Why do you think they thought about making a standard for this? Just for two journal entries, was the standard really required? No. I mean, what else do you think was uh, the point of view there? Somebody saying time, interest read time. What is interest read time? No, sir, you said you will take two hours class for this. <laughs> yeah, that to see for two journal entries, two hours. Huh? Literally, you will now uh, no, sleep off now only. Repaying time. That agreement will tell no. When you have to pay the interest, you may pay the interest monthly, quarterly, or yearly. If you're paying monthly, pass this journal entry every month. If you're paying every year once, then pass the journal entry only once at the end of the year. That's the frequency. Fluctuation, interest rate fluctuates means bank people know how much interest they will collect. Do you know how much you will pay? Yes. So that means is there any problem in the amount? Huh? No. So that means you clearly know the amount. Whatever it is, you will be able to find out the amount. That is not a problem. What to be included, what not to be included? Foreign currency. Foreign currency, we, we anyway discussed it in ES11. That is not the drama. Leave that out. Anything else? Perfect. Instead of transferring the interest to P and L, can we transfer it somewhere else is what they thought. And with that, they have formed the standard. Correct. Normally, in your mind, interest expense has to go to P and L. But they thought, no, 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 no. Under circum certain circumstance, interest cannot be transferred to P and L. It has to go somewhere else. That is the treatment we are about to majorly <laughs> learn over here. Are we fine? I'll tell you what this is about in crux one line way first and then we will go for it. Sir, if you have borrowing or maybe I'll write this down, it will be easier. 
if you have borrowing on this borrowing you will incur what sir borrowing cost borrowing cost means can i write interest correct no what they are trying to say is check for what purpose did you make this or did you take this borrowing for what purpose did you take this borrowing let us say this borrowing no was incurred for something known as qualifying asset if this borrowing is taken for what sir qualifying asset if this borrowing is incurred towards purchase of qualifying asset or construction of qualifying asset or acquisition of or production of qualifying asset then this interest cost no it will not go to pnl rather it will be capitalized meaning added to the cost of qualifying asset itself did you understand all other borrowing cost will go off to pnl and you understand the whole drama if the check what i'll repeat once again if the borrowing is incurred for what sir if the borrowing cost if the borrowing is taken to either purchase a qualifying asset or construct a qualifying asset or to produce a qualifying asset then the borrowing cost like interest it will not go to p and l rather it will be added to the cost of qualifying asset itself like remember capital expenditure topic you must have learned it in your ca foundation building registration charges Installation charges of machinery you transferred to P and L or what did you do? Installation charges paid on purchase of machinery. What did you do? You added to the cost of machinery. Same drama will be applied here also. If the borrowing cost, if it is related to qualifying asset, then the borrowing cost will not go to P and L. Rather, it will get added to the cost of the asset itself. That only we say it is being capitalized. However, if borrowing cost is not related to qualifying asset. If it is not related to qualifying asset, then it will go where? It will go off to P and L. That whatever you have done in your bachman, that will cut. This is the first major distinction. That's all we'll be doing in all our problem. Did you understand this? So the second question that will run in your mind is, sir, what is this? Sir? Qualifying asset. Everything okay. We got to know. But what is this? Qualifying asset. Sir, qualifying asset means that asset which takes substantial period of time to get ready. Subs qualifying asset means that asset which takes substantial period of time to get ready for intended use. Or I'll write to get ready for use. Understood? Ah? No, sir. Fuck. Sir, I took a loan to construct a building. I've taken a bank loan to construct a building can i construct a building in one day one month two months or it takes a lot of time a lot of time okay and substantial period of time here generally we interpret to be 12 months or more than 12 months something which takes more than one year or more than 12 months we call it as what substantial period of time all right ordinarily yeah, this is lesser period also you can justify or let me continue with this example uh, so I've took I've taken a loan. That means do I have a borrowing? Yes. If I have a borrowing, means will I have borrowing cost? Yes. For what purpose or for what joy did I take that borrowing? To construct a building, not to purchase a building. To construct a building. Will the building be constructed uh, in one or two months, or it will take a lot of time? Let's say building construction takes two years. It is a twenty-storied building which I'm constructing, office building. And what is the timeline, sir? Two years. Now you tell me, is that building a qualifying asset? For my example, is a building in my example a qualifying asset? Qualifying asset means what? Something which takes more than 12 months to get ready. If I start the construction of the building today, can I use it today only or when can I use it? Or when is it available for use? After two years. I mean, is it taking more than 12 months? Yes. Something which takes more than 12 months to get ready for use, we call it as what? qualifying asset understood huh? fine let me give you another example sir i am constructing a plant and machinery i am constructing a i did not purchase a plant and machinery i am constructing a plant and machinery i am doing it on my own construction period takes 15 months i started the construction of plant and machinery today can i start using the machinery today only or when i'll be able to use this machinery only after 15 months Okay, so that means is machinery a qualifying asset? Yes. Why? 
because it is available for use now or after 12 months it is available for use only after 12 months hence that asset we call it as what qualifying asset is he everybody any problems no sir i purchased a television this tv i have purchased is tv a qualifying asset i purchased the tv this one is it a qualifying asset why is it taking substantial period of time to get ready or it is already ready for use this tv is already ready for use i just have to plug in the, the take the switch plug into the switchboard switch it on and done done are done correct now that's all correct what about this ac ac purchased laptop purchased furniture purchased all these are what qualifying asset or non qualifying asset non qualifying asset on what ground are you saying it is non -quali not a qualifying asset because it is ready for use immediately is it taking more than 12 months to get ready or is it already ready for use already ready for use so means those are not qualifying asset if it is not a qualifying asset then interest cost you will add it to the cost of the asset or will it go to p and l if it is not a qualifying asset interest cost will go off to p and l only on qualifying asset interest will get up and think logically also you took a loan to construct a building is building already ready for use that means what matching concept you will building means you're constructing the building because you are expecting some benefit on it nobody will construct it just like that no they see benefit what does matching concept say expense and income should be matched you took a loan on that loan are you paying interest yes you're paying interest to the bank but what purpose was this loan taken for? Construction of building. From building, are you already started getting benefits or it is not ready for use? Not ready for use. You are booking an expense, but is it possible for you to take the benefit? No. Hence, this period interest don't transfer it to p and L, rather add it to the cost of the building itself. Because this loan is necessary for the construction of building. That is easy. Got it, Asar? That means qualifying asset is only fixed asset, Asar? No. Qualifying asset could be fixed asset, meaning it could be a property plan and equipment or it could be an intangible asset. I am constructing or I am, uh, yeah, I am constructing a software and that software uh, development is taking 15 months. Then software is also a qualifying asset. Sir, can inventory be a qualifying asset? Yes. Inventory also could be a qualifying asset. How, sir? Sir, I am constructing a aeroplane. Airbus. Okay, I'm an aircraft dealer. My business is to manufacture aircrafts and sell the aircraft to whoever wants it. That's my business. I manufacture aircraft and I sell it. Aircraft can I manufacture in one day? Aircraft to ship and all can I manufacture in one day? No, let's say it takes about two years to construct a ship or an the aircraft. That means is it taking a substantial period of time? Yes. So if you have taken any loan to construct this aircraft, then the interest on that loan, will you transfer it to P&L or it will be added? It will be added to the cost of inventory because inventory in this example becomes your qualifying asset. Fair enough, anything could be qualifying asset. Right? You have to decode it on a case-to-case -case basis. Basically, fixed asset also could be a qualifying asset. Intangible asset also could be qualifying asset. Inventory also could be qualifying asset. But the inventory, they have brought in some rules which is not there here. You learn it in CA final. Okay, let me not go there at all. Are you okay with this so far? So qualifying asset simply means what? That asset which takes substantial period of time to get ready for use. And ordinarily that substantial period of time is considered to be 12 months. This is not a hard rule. Huh? Lesser than 12 months also is taken. Ordinarily accounting standard considers that 12 months is the substantial period of time. Lesser period also can be justified. Okay. Yeah, we will see in problems. That depends on case to case basis. India does not give any months at all. It says it is management discretion. What is substantial period of time? Who took the loan? Company. Who is deciding for what loan, what purpose the loan should be utilized? Company. So, substantial period of time also, who should define? Management. Because for some company, 3 months is substantial. For some company, 10 months is substantial. Correct? No? We are in coaching industry. Some other company could be in different industry. Both of us are on the same line. Huh? No. For coaching industry, we have to pay the salary on a different cycle. Teachers remuneration work on a different cycle. We collect the fees from students in a different cycle. Correct. No. Some other companies works in a different time. Hence, India says, I mean, IFRS says, substantial period of time is left to management decision. 
Even three months could be substantial. Even 15 months could not be substantial. That company has to decide. But accounting standard ordinarily takes the benchmark to be 12 months. But it also says lesser period is also accepted provided you can justify. That leeway also give it. Okay. Uh, what is it? A16 will not come into picture now. What if I purchased a second hand building and it was remodeling for more than 12 months? Okay, saying, sir, I purchased a second hand building. Building is already there. But I have doing a remodeling. Who is using the building? Company. Can they use the building now only or they will use it only after remodeling? They will use it only after remodeling. And he is saying remodeling takes more than 12 months. Now tell me what is it? Qualifying or non-qualifying? Qualifying yourself. Qualifying so when they we say ready for use here, ready for management use. However, management wants to use it, it should be available for you. If it is not ready, then it is a qualifying asset. Or just to give you one more related example. You told television is a qualifying asset or a non-qualifying asset. Television. Qualifying or non-qualifying? Online also respond for this. Let's see. Television is not, not a qualifying asset or non-qualifying asset. Unanimous everyone. Can I modify this example slightly? Sir, there is a hotel. I am constructing a hotel. In hotel lobby, have you seen TV? I have purchased TV already because I got a good deal. But hotel is not yet constructed. Hotel takes 15 months for construction. Now you tell me, TV is qualifying asset or not qualifying asset? Or the example, I have purchased a TV already. Will I use a TV in my house or in hotel? in hotel. Hotel will be ready only after 15 months. Okay. Now you tell me, is that, I'm not talking about hotel, I'm talking about TV. Is that TV a qualifying asset or not a qualifying asset? Not a qualifying. It is a qualifying asset. It is a qualifying asset. What did I clearly say over here? Substantial period of time to get ready for use. Whose use? Yours and mine's or management? Management. When will management use it? Only after hotel is constructed. Hotel will get constructed only after 15 months. That means TV ka usage also will start only after 15 months. So if you have taken a loan for purchasing a television, in that case it will become a, or rather television is a qualifying asset. Okay, so it depends on circumstance to circumstance. You can't just say that this asset is qualifying, that is not qualifying. Same asset could be qualifying in one circumstance, it may not be qualifying in another circumstance. Like a AC example also, AC is not a qualifying asset because it is already ready for use. But I have purchased an AC, but I have purchased an AC to install it in a building. Building is still under construction. Building construction takes 20 months. That means AC also becomes a qualifying asset. Because without building, can I use the AC? No, like that. Hmm? So depends on circumstance to circumstance. Just to give you an example there. Everybody understood this? So is the meaning clear of qualifying and non-qualifying? Okay, any, any more doubts or can I move on? Can I use it at my house till the contract is complete? No company will use that. Right? <laughs> Hotel industry will use the TV in their management house and then uh, they will shift up. That and will not happen. Anyways, leave that. Are we fine with this? Uh, this is over. Then, this I've already told you. If you incurred any bor borrowing cost towards qualifying asset, then what will happen, sir? It will be capitalized. Other borrowing cost will go where? It will be treated as revenue expenditure, meaning it will be transferred off to p &L. This is a treatment we have already done. Oh, so let's do a thing. Let's go and solve a couple of questions so that uh, we're there. Come to question number two, all of you. PRM Limited obtained a loan from bank for 120 lakhs. So loan is taken for 120 lakhs. On which date? 30th April 2016. It was utilized as follows. Loan means you should utilize it for only one purpose or it could be utilized for multiple purpose also. Multi-purpose, multiple purpose also. So this loan, no, out of this 120 lakh, 50 lakh was spent on construction of a shed. 40 lakh of the loan was was utilized to purchase a machinery. 20 lakh for working capital. Working capital means to meet our day-to-day -day expense, to pay our employees, to pay our creditors, to pay our electricity bill, blah, blah, blah. For a day-to-day -day expense, we utilized 20 lakh. And 10 lakh was utilized to purchase a truck. We have given an advance to purchase a truck. So if you add all of this, how much are you getting? 120 lakhs. That's how that loan has got utilized. Done. All right. Now let's see. Construction of a shed was completed in March 2017. Sir, when did you take the loan? 
April 2016. But the shed is completed in March 2017. If you count. So how many months is it? May, June, July. 30th April you have taken. No? So I'll leave April portion. Then it will be May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December, January, February, March. That means it is taking roughly 11 months. Huh? This construction of a shed is taking about 11 months. Fine? <laughs> ah, ah. All right. So now maybe I'll uh, do a thing or maybe first we'll prove it. What do you think according? The shed is a qualifying asset or not a qualifying asset? Sir, I told 12 months is only for the base. Shorter period is justifiable. In examination, you can assume it's not a big deal. Okay, because you can write an assumption saying it is not a qualifying asset. My assumption is 10, 11 months and all if it goes, take it as qualifying asset. Assumption only and it is depends also. This 12 months is not mandatory, sir. Lesser period is also justifiable what is substantial period of time it depends on company to company for your benchmark take anything more than six qualifying it's fine if you write assume assume it as non-qualifying still if i was evaluator i would have given you marks but generally in these sort of problems anything more than six or seven they are taking it as qualifying just an assumption but that's what they're doing to be on the safer side i suggest you make the same assumption so construction of a shed will take it as qa as in Qualifying us. How about purchase of machinery? Let's read through that. Machinery was installed on the date of acquisition only. The day you bought it only, you installed it. That means, is it taking some time to get ready or already ready? Already ready. So, what is this? It is non qualifying asset or not a qualifying asset. Correct? Ah? All right. Next, delivery of the uh, working capital. What do you think? Is working capital an asset, sir? Working capital is for your day-to-day -day affairs, day-to-day -day expenses. So, is this a qualifying asset or not a qualifying asset? Not a qualifying asset. That leaves us with the last option. Advance given for the purchase of truck. The delivery of the truck was not yet received. Now, this we don't know. Yes, maybe the truck is, the truck is getting constructed for which we have given advance. In that case, you can assume it to be qualifying. Or maybe the truck is already constructed, but I want to delay the process. In that case, it will be non-qualifying because they have given the absence of information. You can assume it as qualifying or assume it as non-qualifying. It is fine. Absence of data. We don't know. Yes. So maybe in this problem, I'll take it as non-qualifying asset. Itself. If you want, you can take qualifying also. Should be okay. Hmm? The total interest charged by the bank for the year ended 31st March 2017 was how many lakhs? 18 lakhs show the treatment of interest sir i'll present it in a table so that it we can show like this treatment of interest we will write treatment of interest as per accounting standard 16 that is borrowing cost so i'll write here purpose then i'll write i'll have some uh, tables maybe purpose nature then i'll have interest to be capitalized and interest charge to pay end. These four tables, I'll make it. Can I start? Okay, first purpose. For what, what is the first purpose for which the loan was used? Construction of a shed. Okay, let me write that down here. Construction of a shed. This shed, what are we taking it as? Qualifying asset or non-qualifying asset? We are taking it as a qualifying asset. Qualifying asset. Okay. If it is a qualifying asset, interest cost will be capitalized or interest cost will go to PNL. If it's qualifying asset, the interest cost will get capitalized. Now check here. I'll just do one double over here. Loan and interest. Sir, what is the total loan you took? 120 lakhs what is the total interest you are paying on this loan the total interest you are paying is 18 lakhs yes sir this entire 120 lakhs you utilized for construction of a shed or only part of the amount part of the amount which part of the amount was used for construction of shed 50 lakhs yes no so 18 lakh is an interest for a loan amount of 120 lakhs for shed purpose we only utilized 50 lakh. For 50 lakh, how much is the interest? Proration. Is it okay? Everyone got this calculation? Okay. So, 
take this 18 lakh is the interest for a loan amount of 120 lakhs for 50 lakh utilized how much the cross multiplication how much will be that uh -huh. 7 lakh 50 thousand is the interest portion relating to the construction of a shed which will get capitalized will this go to pnl so dash o anything you can do that's not a problem however you want to present you present no problem Are we good with this? Can I present the other things also in a similar fashion? What is after construction of a shed? What sir? Purchase of machinery. Machinery, what are we assuming it as? Non-qualifying asset. Can I write QA? QA stands for qualifying asset. This is non-qualifying asset. People good, no? Okay, because it was ready for use on the same day. That's the reason. Hmm? Now, how much loan was utilized for purchase of machinery? 40 lakh. So, 18 lakh is the interest pertaining to 120 lakhs. Or in fact, it should be capitalized or it will go to p and So, that means I should write in the other column. 18 lakh is the interest for a loan amount of 120 lakh. For 40 lakh, how much? So, 6 lakh of interest pertaining to machinery purchase will be going off to p and Because it is a non-qualifying asset. So, Other three are also non-qualifying assets. If you want, you can combine everything and do one working note also. That is also fine. But here, for first problem, so I am showing it separate. Hmm? Next is what, sir? Working capital. Working capital means qualifying asset or not a non-qualifying asset? Non-qualifying asset. That means nothing here. How 18 lakh is the interest for a loan amount of 120 lakh. How much was utilized for working capital? 20 lakhs. So that means this will be 1, 6, so 3 lakhs. Huh? So 3 lakh is a working capital interest that will be transferred off to P and L. Next, it's an advance for advance for purchase of truck. So they have not given much information about the truck. In this problem, we are assuming it to be non-qualifying asset. Can you also assume it to be qualifying asset? Yes. Absence of information, any assumption should be valid or is valid. Okay. 18 lakh is the interest for a loan amount of 120 lakh. How much was used for this truck purpose? 10 lakh. For 10 lakh, how much will be the interest? 1 lakh? 1 lakh. 1,50,000 is the interest that gets transferred to PNL. So that means what is the total amount, sir? The total interest that got capitalized is 7,50,000. The total interest that got the transfer to PNL is adding all this 10,50,000. That's all, sir. Easy, you know. Five five marks. They ask this question. Four line, four five items. They'll give you. You just have to categorize like this and answer. That's it. Easy only, you know. Mm, super. No bonds, correct. Huh? It'll some other we'll see. We started now. <laughs> okay, are we, are we done with the, this question now? Wait or move on? Yeah, they have asked such questions also. Easy questions also will come, guys. See, it does not mean every question will be bouncer. They will balance it out. Okay, one or two questions generally in a paper will be a little tricky. Like that, if one or two questions is tricky, they will also make one or two questions very straightforward. That also will be there. Okay. So, according to me, passing CA examination is not tough. That I always stand by my words. Those of them who say CA is tough, I cannot, I have, I, I, we cannot pass, they have not prepared. Simple. Efforts, if you don't put, you will not pass. Once if you have studied the syllabus and revised it, 19, more than 90% chance that definitely you will clear. Because some of them also have a little bit of weak memory also. So in those cases, probably you need to, instead of one revision, you may have to do two revisions. But generally, as a normal note, that much is good enough. Hmm? Okay, coming back. Uh, why is it a non-qualifying asset? Working capital. Working capital means the money used for to run day-to-day -day business. To pay creditors, to pay employees and all. Is it an asset? Huh? If you pay money to your creditor, is it an asset? No. Hence, working capital is a non-qualifying asset. Okay, can I go for the next question? Next question we will do for. A company has obtained an institutional term loan for 580 lakhs. So the total loan amount taken is 580 lakhs. 
for modernization and renovation of plant and machinery. So they are reworking their plant and machinery. Fair enough. Plant and machinery acquired under modernization scheme and installation was completed on 31st March 2017 and amounted to 406 lakh. So that means it is taking substantial period of time. No? They have not given the date on which the loan is taken. But uh, in these problems, the expected assumption is the loan is taken at the beginning of the year. But the modernization is completed only by end of the year, that is 31st March. So it does look like it is taking substantial period of time. So what about this modernization? Qualifying or non-qualifying? Qualifying or non-qualifying? Qualifying asset. Out of 580 lakh, how much was used for modernization? 406 lakh. 58 lakh has been utilized, has been advanced to suppliers for additional assets. We have given some advance. That have they given any information? No, that means you can assume it to be qualifying or you can also assume it to be non-qualifying. Anything is okay. And the balance loan of 116 has been utilized for working capital purpose. Working capital means 100% non-qualifying. The accountant is on a dilemma as to how to account the total interest of 52 lakhs. So this 52 lakh is a total interest pertaining to a loan of 580 lakhs. He is not sure how you should account it. You need to guide them. Same as last question. No? So that means for offer, for offer, we'll do offer. Question number three. Huh? Mm, these are fine. No? When they give you three, four case studies, no? for each line item, are you doing properly is what they check. So that is all right. Even if you don't write the provision, they will not ideally look for it. If you write it also, nothing bad. No harm. Okay, what is the first purpose for which this loan has uh, been utilized? Sir? Modernization. Modernization and renovation. Huh? Okay. Okay, nature column we will write. Qualifying asset. That means interest cost will go to PNL or it will get qualified. Uh, it will get capitalized. Capitalized. How much is the total interest you paid? 52.2. Nah? On a total loan of 580 lakhs. Entire 580 lakh got used for modernization or how much? Only 406 lakh got utilized for modernization. So how much will get capitalized? 36.5. That much will get capitalized. Next, what is the next one? Advance for additional assets. No. Advance for additional asset. Okay. They have assumed it as qualifying asset, but you can also assume it as non-qualifying asset because information is not given. So any assumption is valid there. What do you want me to assume? Non-qualifying or oh, okay. Non-qualifying asset. That means it will be capitalized or PNL. PNL. So 52.2 lakh is the interest for 580 lakhs. How much was utilized for additional asset? 58 lakh got utilized. So one tenth. That means it will be 5 lakh 22,000 here. That will get transferred to PNL. If you want, you can assume others who want to assume it as qualifying asset, you can assume it as qualifying asset and bring this number under capitalization call. That is also acceptable. Next is your working capital. That I think I don't have any, we don't have any uh, problems. That is definitely a non-qualifying asset, meaning interest will go off to 52.2 lakh is a total interest on a total loan of 580. How much got utilized for working capital? 116 lakh. So this will be 10.44 lakh. So the total amount will be here it will be 36.54 lakh and here these two conditions will be 15.66 lakh is the interest that got transferred to PNL. Come to question number 4 all of you. Question number 4. Take this one, you should answer. Let's see. Carefully read the question. Give me a final answer. Take limited one company. They have borrowed 30 lakhs from State Bank of India. Okay. Uh, all right. Maybe let me read this question fully. During the financial year 20X1, X2, the borrowing were used to invest in the shares of Give Limited. So they took a loan from bank to buy shares of another company. And it is a subsidiary company of Take Limited. 
and that subsidiary company you know it is implementing a new project estimated to cost 50 lakh as on 31st march 2020x2 since the said project was not completed we have taken the loan in the current year itself and the current year has ended is a project completed or not yet complete not yet complete maybe they are building a factory or they constructing building whatever we don't know what that project is is a project completed in the year or not yet not yet since the project was not completed directors of take limited resolved to capitalize the interest accruing on borrowings to the extent of 4 lakh they saying that project is not complete so hence interest cost i will capitalize all right and add it to the cost of investment and you need to commit what they have done is right or wrong maybe just to, to get you a better clarity i'll just give you this sbi you no know, there is a take limited and there is a give limit take limited took a loan from sbi how much loan 30 lakh rupees they utilized this 30 lakh rupees for what purpose they took this 30 lakh rupees and gave this money to whom give limited take limited gave this money to give limited in in turn give limited gave equity shares to take limited so we have basically made an investment in equity shares of give limited so we use this money to buy the investment fine now and this give limited no they have this 30 lakhs now they are using this money to implement a to do this project and this project is completed or not completed not yet completed in the current year fine now you got the scenario now this company ka directors they are checking who has the money now give limited so they just check since this project is not completed they are saying it is a qualifying asset so hence whatever interest they are paying on this loan no they are adding it to the cost of investment that is what is happening in the current scenario you got the scenario everyone now you need to tell me can you add the interest cost to investment no, considering it as a qualifying asset no, yes or no yes. no why perfect who took the loan sir take limited for what purpose was this loan utilized for to purchase an investment to purchase investment you need substantial period of time sir if you want to buy shares of infosys today you have to wait more than 12 months or hardly in 12 seconds only it will get executed go to uh, execute uh, today i mean you place the order if it's within market hours within hardly one second only it will get purchased yes or no so is investment a qualifying asset or not qualifying asset not a qualifying asset what other company does is their headache who took the loan take limited and this loan was utilized to purchase an investment is investment getting ready for use or it's already ready for use already ready what is the use once once you make investment you will get paper no share certificate you will get so is it a qualifying asset no it is not a qualifying asset so that means the contention of director or the accounting treatment which the director wants to give is correct or not correct is it perfect so i will we answer maybe i'll just give you an answer for this if you want you can copy it down question number 4 na point number 1 as per accounting standard 16 from a borrowing cost you can write come up borrowing cost related or you can write it like this only why to write two two times as per accounting standard 16 comma borrowing cost related to borrowing cost related to qualifying asset should be capitalized and for our reference we will write what is a qualifying asset sir qualifying asset is that asset is that asset which takes substantial period of time which takes substantial period of time to get to get ready for its intended use these are the provisions point number 3 as per accounting standard 13 we have not yet covered that i will tell you this fx both the standard comma accounting for investments a 
acquisition charges like brokerage comma stamp duty etc can be added to cost of investment can be added to cost of investment we will discuss this later on for now you can just bring it in your books fourth one in the present case i'll directly conclude in the present case comma investment is qualifying asset or not qualifying asset investment is not qualifying asset and borrowing cost and borrowing cost is not acquisition charges is not acquisition charges they've already capitalized or they want to they said the project directors or take limit or dissolve to capitalize result to capitalize means they've already done they have taken a stand hence resolution of director is incorrect can i write like that because the director is only resolved no? hence or i'll write here like this hence accounting treatment given by the company is correct or not correct hence accounting treatment given by the company is not correct it violates both as 16 as well as as 13 ka. both the provision is getting violated as 13 don't worry just updated now when we come to that we shall see hmm Anything you want me to zoom in on? Last two points. Oh, okay. yeah. Acquisition charges we will discuss in AS 13. For now, don't worry. Hence, accounting treatment given by the company is not correct. All right. That's it for today. Let's catch up tomorrow. Bye-bye.